what's up everyone so today we're back again with another tutorial this time we're going to be doing something a little bit subtle something a little trippy we're going to be messing with just some some displacement we're going to be messing with some some glowing a little bit of lens distortion per usual and i hope you find it useful you can use it as a nice background for a, a club flyer instagram post whatever you uh kind of want i'll be kind of showing that towards the end, but the majority of the tutorial is just gonna be in Blender. If you're interested in some more stuff with layout and type, feel free to drop a comment down below and just let me know, just be like, hey, oh my God, like, I really would love a type tutorial to make this for Instagram or something like that. I can show that if you're interested. If not, we'll just keep the show rolling with Blender. So I'll catch you around and let's get right into it. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right on in. So we're gonna go ahead and delete our default objects. And let's start off by making sure that everything is set up correctly. Ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, all within the render properties tab. Let's head over here to edit, make sure the preferences, check preferences, I mean. Go to animation, default interpolation set to linear. Boom, cool. Let's spawn in an icosphere. Let's make sure, oopsie daisy. Let's spawn in an icosphere. Click this. Make sure so the divisions are set to like eight. Or you can get pretty wild with it if your computer is strong enough. Obviously mine is not because we're getting a bit of lag. So I'm gonna set mine to about seven. Okay, so once you have a nice little default cube or default, um, default icosphere, go ahead and set the scale to around two. I think that's a safe enough bet. Now let's play with some displacement first to make sure we get everything right there. So go to displace, click new, make sure the mid level is zero. Right over here to the pill kind of action texture tab let's go to magic make sure depth is set to one turbulence 20. cool you can see it's a bit you can see if you have a strong computer you can probably subdivide here and clean up a bit of those or we can have a subdivision modifier honestly i suggest if most of you aren't running on those really strong graphics cards it's not going to work or you're a really patient person, one or the other. So once we have it kind of set up this way, I'm gonna teach you how to animate it before we start adding our cameras and materials. So let's go ahead and click curve, make it a circle. Let's bring in an empty here, which is an empty tab, not the mesh tab. <laughs> and then you're empty, go to object constraints, which is this like wheel kind of thing. Make sure you follow path. Make sure it's the Bezier circle. Now let's go over to our timeline. Let's keyframe on zero, bring it to the end, 250, set it to 100, insert. Now within here, you're gonna see a little bit of an animation going on here. And what we're gonna do now within our iconosphere and our, our little um, modifiers property, from coordinates, switch that from local to object, target the empty now if we pay attention here now you can see we have a fully functioning looping displacement you can see in zero and the last frame it's the same exact thing now this is a whole other animation if you want but we'll save that for another day so now let's do focus on let's focus on what we said we're going to do here let's cause a vertical split Let's go front. We're just gonna spawn in a camera. So you can see what's going on. I suggest going into wireframe. I'm gonna pull my camera back a little bit inside the shape. Hold tilde, view camera. You can see now we're inside of the shape, which is pretty fascinating in my opinion. And you can see kind of where um, my like uh, animation plays out. So I like to do material preview here just because it's going to be a lot of things going on. So let's just split uh, 
and split this view horizontally. And if you want to just make sure you're focusing on what's inside of the camera, the camera, pass a pout. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. Feel free to correct me in the comments. You can play with depth of field if you want to see more. Let's just go ahead and set our depth of field to around 30. Now, if you're wondering like, oh my God, this, this animation is so fast. I need to slow it down. It's, it's controlled by the, the empty and the Bezier curve. So if you make the Bezier curve smaller, we're gonna go ahead and get a much smoother animation. Perfect for the ambient music, things like that. You bring it up, we're gonna get this crazy like boom, 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 techno kind of thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it around here. We want it to feel like, like you know, oozing materials. So, okay, enough of that with the animations. Let's target our iconosphere and let's play with some of the materials. Turn up metallic, pretty much all the way. Turn down roughness, just, wow, it's kind of cool. You can just pull it all the way down. Turn down roughness just a tad bit. You don't want it to be too far gone. Okay, now we're gonna bring in a light. Use a point light here. Let's just go ahead and make it a color. I believe you can see the change in the materials tab. Now let's go to rendered. Okay, then you're rendered. You can see we have this blue light. So just make sure it's not too strong. The reason why I haven't changed the color of the material yet, nor the environment, is I wanna make sure that my light, I just wanna really make sure that we're not giving too much of this highlight. So I like around 40 watts with the light that we just brought in, the point light that is. So like I just mentioned, let's go into our world environment. Let's bring it down by a lot. You can see the big change here. Let's bring it down by quite a bit in the background color. Now our material, we're just gonna make this, oh wow, it's kind of cool. You can really play with things here. But we're gonna make it decently dark. We don't want it to be too bright. And what you can do is we can actually play with the colors too. We have green, blue, but I'm gonna go back to what I was saying and just make it kind of like dark. Because we, we want the textures to show, but we don't want it to be too crazy. Okay. Now I'm gonna tinker my animation just a little bit more. Make it a little bit slower on my end because it came out a lot faster. I'm sure the same thing is probably gonna happen for you. So here we go. Now, what you're gonna see is we have a bit of this like crazy kind of animation. And one of the things I did was I animated the color change. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. So click your point light. Let's pause this real quick. Go to zero. Insert keyframe on that color. I like to go around halfway. Let's pick, let's do a nice little color that is somewhere close, but not too close. Insert the keyframe, go back here. Copy, go to 250. Bring in that hex value that we just had, insert it. And now you're gonna see our animation is getting a little more creative, a little more colorful. It's pretty cool. If you want, let's go ahead and just add another point light. So you're gonna press Shift D once again, just duplicate it. I believe we actually don't want to duplicate it. Oops, sorry, everyone. Let's not duplicate it. Let's just bring in another point light. Let's bring it a little bit up here. Thirty watts. Let's give it a bit of like an accent color. You can make it blue. I don't want to make. If you make it blue, you're gonna lose it the whole way, but you wanna make it something that's gonna be a little bit of like an accent the whole time. So we don't really touch on much red. You can see, here we go. 
an animation, it plays and it changes colors and we get this nice cool effect. Cool. And the last thing we want to do here, my friend, is <laughs> save. <laughs> no. Uh, let's go ahead and run over to the comp compos compositing tab. Let's bring in a viewer node. Reroute. Oops. Attach that. Here I am again with the lens distortion. Up to you. You don't have to include it if you want, but personally. Personally, I'm a huge fan of it. Add a little bit of jitter. And from there, I think you're good to go. So for everyone trying to figure out how to render it out as a video, select your output where you want it to go. Go ahead and make sure the format is FFmpeg video. Encoding, set it to MPG4. Uh, perpetually lossless is good. Go ahead if you want. You can pump up the, the render pixels. And once you click render animation, everything is Gucci. And it looks like you completed another one of the tutorials. And I'm so glad to have you here on this journey. I think for me personally, I'm always kind of uh, learning Blender slowly. I'm a product designer by trade. So it's kind of my side hobby uh, to make these things for the Blender community. and. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you and hope you subscribe and hope you uh, join the Discord. I'm going to have to leave a link for the Discord. I'd love to get to meet, love to get to know you. <laughs> so anyways, peace out.